for questions. Shall we just see how many questions are? Okay, we, we can do that. Uh, uh, if you have questions that you wish to ask any of our presenters here tonight, raise your hand, we'll get the mic to you and you can... Uh, my goodness, they did such a great job that everybody is uh, no question. John M. Well, this may be more of a comment, but uh, if you looked at the uh, inundation flooding imagery, actually Sarasota fares better, like downtown Sarasota fares much better than many places. And the earliest development in Sarasota took place on the higher land, whether you're talking about downtown or Old Mahaka or wherever. Um, so when we have, and the other point I want to make is that when we look at this, we've, today we've tended to focus on Sarasota Bay. I think we need to look regionally. So when we have eight feet of uh, seawater, you're still going to be able to walk up and down Main Street and shop. The people in South Gulf Cove are going to be thinking about replacing their ceiling fans. I mean, the, the further south you go in Sarasota and Charlotte County, um, the worse the flooding potential gets. So we're going to be seeing a lot of um, refugees, essentially, from uh, Port Charlotte, and South Gulf Cove, and places to the south, uh, even though we have a real, you know, quite a bit of fairly high land right in the downtown area. When you go, when you go up the Boulevard of the Arts, you almost get a nosebleed, you know, coming up to, <laughs> coming up to Coconut. So that's very significant, and, it, and it's uh, dramatically different than a lot of the, the coast of Florida south of here. Well, you're, for a long time, the flood surge zone maps for Sarasota County have shown exactly that, that the Venice and all down that area uh, are at much higher risk from flood uh, surge. And the ironic thing, I guess, about that is that our comprehensive plan has directed a lot of our future growth exactly into those areas. Just just, to, just say it, as they say. And there's one back here. Do you have a question? Hi. This is almost uh, hip uh, well, not to be disrespectful, but we're talking about um, carbon into the air caused by energy use. And we're sitting here in an ice box. Um, and, and also, the, the, the sound system is turned up um, way louder than is healthy. So, um, I turned the thermostat up once over here, but I'm cold too, so I know where you're coming from. We'll take that. Yeah. Okay. Let's go over here. Just a quick observation and some good news going forward. Uh, they talk about automobile emissions. Well, my company was just granted a federal blanket purchase agreement to provide electric vehicle charging stations for the federal fleets nationally. This is Apollo Sungarver, a local Sarasota manufacturer. But the disappointing news is the grant we won could be worth up to $20 million. However, the Syrian missile attack that took place two weeks ago, that cost $100 million for the 69 missiles. Yeah. Yeah. Another question. I, uh, yeah, but you mentioned that the... Uh, Speak, speak. Sorry, to the mic. you mentioned that the wind's oh, close, close to you. Close, yeah. really close? Yeah. 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 Uh, you mentioned the wind of South Africa might, you know, it's going across the, the, yeah. the Sahara, that they might affect uh, the, uh, the conditions here. Um, I'm talking specifically now about red tides, and uh, we've had more red tides this year than we have, that I can remember, you know, I mean, uh, I think yeah. probably half a dozen at least this year. Um, I mean, if we're getting red tides because of these African winds, why aren't they coming from, why aren't they worse in the south 
Um, I mean, it seems to me, you know, looking at statistics here, the red tides and the severity of them over the past little while, they seem to be worse up north than down south. I mean, they seem to get better, the conditions get better the further you go down the coast. So, why is that? I sure don't have the answer, but maybe one of our... Yeah, yeah. I, I didn't mean to suggest that there is a causative relationship necessarily between those, uh, the iron and the dust and red tide. The red tide organism is, has been here a long time. It's a very complex relationship. We've spent a lot of time, a lot of organizations, Moat Marine, and many others have tried to fully understand it, and I don't think we do yet today. So it's one of many factors, and uh, and again, there's a lot of things um, uh, that are affecting our environment, and that's one, though. And I think the major thing I was trying to get across was that we are a worldwide um, a global system, and we are affected. Um, that's having some effects. It doesn't necessarily mean it's causing the red tide. And so there won't be a direct relationship. Every time we dump dust into the Gulf, we won't necessarily see red tide blooms. But it's one of the many strange factors that are contributing. Several years ago, uh, the old St. B. Times newspaper ran a series of articles talking about Long before we have to worry about water in our feet, it's going to be the cost of replacing the degrading in infrastructure that's going to make us want to move. And I was now the problem is, of course, we already know we have antiquated infrastructure pipes and stuff that need to be replaced already. So, is is there any is there any projection of based on? The state of the of, of our infrastructure that's going to be the drain that I mean basically we yeah we built on high ground here but we also drained the place so the high ground would stay dry how all of that's going to be compounded with sea level rise so that we'll just I mean we're talking about raising taxes uh, we're, uh, we're talking about all of those things before really we've got water lapping up uh, to our houses. Is, it, is there any any thoughts from the panelists about that? Not from somebody who's concerned with our food supply, right? <laughs> it's Dr. Cluson of the whole extension and everything else uh, service. He knows more about where your food comes from than anybody else around here. So if you want to have questions about that, talk to him. Anybody have an answer about the... You, you don't want to answer, Wade, you just want to ask, okay. All right, my question has to do with the rate of sea level rise. I've heard two, two uh, sides. One, that the rate of sea level rise is not drastically increasing, it varies from year to year and so on. Another, that the slippage of ice underneath uh, ice flows, glaciers, and so on in Greenland and Antarctica is is uh, is increasing, and it can drastically increase. Which is more likely that the rate of sea level rise is going to remain about the same, or that it's going to be drastically increased within the next within the next twenty or twenty five years? And I don't know who would answer best. Maybe maybe Tim. Uh, sure, I'll who has Tim has the answer. The most of the current discuss, discussion is leaning towards we're on the edge of seeing a rapid increase in the melt rate. We know that in Greenland the ice there is melting significantly faster than it even was about three years ago. Uh, and the Antarctic ice is is picking up speed and so the projections are that we're going to we're going to get a pulse. Uh, in in you know, like the next 20, 30 years, we'll, we'll really be able to notice a pulse. And so it, it'll be gradual for a while, and then it's going to spike, uh, and then it'll taper and spike again. So um, you know, for the next you know, 10 years or so, it'll probably be about you know, what it is, but by 15, 20 years, it'll be dramatically higher. So yeah. But very, variable, but higher. Variable, but higher, yeah. 
think Tim said during his presentation, you could take your pick of which of the statistics you want to uh, believe, right? Right. Whichever is high enough to make you act, but not yeah. high enough to scare you. <laughs> it was a very interesting presentation of uh, what's coming. Um, I'd, I'd just like to mention a couple of organizations that are doing something. One is the Sarasota Ready for 100 group that is uh, encouraging the city of Sarasota to go 100% renewable energy by 2035 or 2045 to transition to zero emissions energy. And the other one is, and I have uh, things, uh, I have a thing for people to sign, we're going to present to the city commission on the 5th of June and then ask them to uh, uh, adopt the resolution on the 19th of June. So the more people who can sign this, the better. And if there are any businesses or organizations who would like to sign on to it, that helps too. And the other is the Citizens Climate Lobby. They have, um, in every single congressional district in the country, they have a group and they are um, lobbying Congress people to uh, address climate change and they have formed a bipartisan climate solutions committee in Congress and so they're working together in a bipartisan fashion uh, to, adopt, to address climate change and they are proposing a fee on carbon at the wellhead uh, port or mine that goes up uh, every year a certain amount that it's a market-based solution. The revenue from that comes back uh, to every single person in the country. So it's not selecting any particular uh, industry or entity. It it's, uh, goes back to the people. Thank you. And now, and you can, you've all, I think, gotten the little yellow things and you know where to sign. Anybody else, before we thank everybody, uh, certainly all of you all for coming, and thank all of our panelists and Lori for, organ I guess you're the grand organizer. Uh, uh, that was certainly a fantastic presentation. We do have one more question. So right now uh, in our neighborhood, actually bordering off the Vistas Terrace Gardens and in a normal storm, they get flooded. Uh, it, I understand it's the county's responsibility to do the stormwater uh, drains and uh, lines. So the county is balking on funding the improvement for that. Other neighborhoods I heard at the city neighborhood council on Saturday uh, have the drains but, and the sewer lines, the storm sewers, but they need to be cleaned out and the counties likewise block in or delaying on that. So if any other neighborhoods have a similar uh, situation, please contact me or see me and we can form a coalition to try to um, put some pressure on our officials. All right, so anybody? Want to join in? There's your man. Okay. Thank all of you all, and uh, we will have one more Kona meeting of the season in June. We do not meet in July and August, so we will be putting out our announcement for the program before long.